Hi there, my name is Giacomo Longaro. I'm here in Cusco City again, and we're going to explore the Czech Takaka Cavern. Just to give you a tip for its location, it is right across the street from the Casona del Inca restaurant, and right behind me is the entrance to the cavern of Czech Takaka. Let me tell you, this is a small place, but it's big of full surprises. Join us. We are outside the limits of Cusco City, but much closer to Sacsayhuaman Archaeological Park. Here you can see the typical megalithic cuts in stone similar to what you found nearby Sacsayhuaman and Kenko. The entrance to Chectacaca Cavern is narrow and sinuous. It's really for a small group of people. This place looks ancient to me. From the entrance you can see the natural rock formation has been altered artificially with the classic angular cuts and smooth surfaces. All these irregular horizontal concave formations, or cuts I would say, are indeed a proof of the capability of the ancient architects to alter at their convenience natural caverns and create tunnels or chincanas, as the one that exists under the Santo Domingo Church downtown Cusco. Take a look at the shapes cuts of the cavern now, since I'm looking from inside out, the entrance is right a, a serpentine-like artificial aisle. This section of the chamber is quite dark and uh, some rock has fallen from the top into the ground. The carving and seats like all look at just one big work with unknown tools that easily cut it through the granite. Thanks God we use a cell phone flashlight, if not we would have missed this section of the cavern which is uh, about 7 feet high and there is a smooth polished section, I will say to the point of vitrification. Uh, this is another beautiful example that can be seen on the central chamber. It's on an L shape or acute angle. Look at the surface and the fine horizontal cut in parallel. I have no doubt that the whole stone seat was originally as polished as an Italian marble. This section is indeed perfectly polished. Doesn't stop to amaze me to see this firsthand and to prove that ancient technology was used here and in other parts of the world. Another amazing cut is on the upper left side of the wall at the entrance of the cavern. It is about six and a half high and you can see one long dry cut on the rock in a perfect angle. Looks like a Swiss precision. I should correct myself. It was done non-stop with a blade capable to cut the granite like a cheese. Now things are getting better here. This is a small place, but full of surprises. Of course, if you love this stuff like me. That unknown ancient architect used high technology and left their signature here. Look at this. Look at this. This is what keeps me going. I have learned to keep my eyes open, looking for details like this one. This is a beautiful double angle cut with a surface vitrified, a glass-like shining surface. Let me tell you something. One thing is watching this video and one thing is to be here and you have it in front of you. Look at the details of the vertical millimetric cut the stone looks like a ceramic, like a tile. Since this area having been exposed to the forces of nature, we have the opportunity to record them for you guys. After watching this, you cannot tell me these cuts made on granite were made with the tools on display in museums. Really? In order to melt stones, you need at least between 1112 to 2190 degrees Fahrenheit. How is this possible? Why well, we don't have an explanation from the experts? Why don't they explain these cuts or at least make an attempt to find a coherent explanation? Because what you are watching here is evident. Or is this a geological aberration? Or since these millimetric cuts are an aberration, it is unwelcome. It is uncomfortable for all the experts to explain. These are cuts that were made 
by unknown tools yet to be discovered by archaeological excavations. Similar cuts on granite, diorite, and limestone are also found on the other side of the world. I mean Egypt. I have my conclusions, but I'm doing this video because people need to be informed. People need to, to know. Now, we're just right across the street from the cavern inspecting this rock formation which is facing towards the city of Cusco. And voila, you can see similar straight cuts. The rock is well eroded and there was probably more cuts but they disappear within time. A lot of time. I think that this area was vital and important as the cavern itself. Its position towards Cusco City, the navel of the world, perhaps has to do with a pre-coordinated astronomical event. In other words, there must have been an important reason to alter a natural cavern for ceremonial or ritual purposes designed by unknown ancient architects that view the world as a union between Mother Earth and Father Sky. If you like my video, please subscribe and share. Thank you so much.